Okay, well, um, well, this is the third um, interview at the Budget Guard Society 2018 Club Show, um, and we have the McGovern's with us. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to, to come and speak with us. Um, well, can you tell us what you've won, firstly? <laughs> it's, a, it's a long list, so... Uh, well, we have can the you best recall? in show and the best opposite sex. Fantastic. In the show. We have several CCs. Uh, <laughs> Don't bother me shouting them all out, but we got several CCs on the day with adults and young birds. So it's, I don't know exactly because I haven't counted them myself. Have you counted them? Six or seven CCs on the day. And obviously, you're your new name um, on the, the roll call of uh, of uh, Budget Art Society Club Show winners. How does how does that feel? Is to be a, a bench well, the best in show? Yeah, well, well, it's a great feeling because obviously you. This is what you thrive for. When you, you have the birds for many years. I've been breeding the birds since I was 14. Joe, you know, he's been doing the birds younger than that, since he was a boy. Uh, and Callum, of course, has helped me along the way. So you know, it takes a long time to get here. And it's, it is a great feeling to, to be on that list. It's, uh, it is fantastic. It's a great achievement. You know, it's, it's what you thrive well. for. It's, it's, what it's, it's what it's about to win this show, isn't it? All the hard work is paid off. I know of many people who, and they've been really good breeders of budgies, and they've never made best in show at the club show. It just, it just hasn't happened for them. But, uh, so we're very, so we're very lucky, we're very lucky. I mean, you, you say, I think you probably do need a lot of luck in this hobby, but it does, it appears to most of us that the ones who are continually successful as you guys are, um, you work, you, you work very hard at it. Would you, is it, is it the, the sort of attempt, the small attention to detail that stands you out, would you say, from, from other fanciers? Doesn't happen all right. Like, he, he's been doing it for how long, he was sent there. Like, look, you do need a bit of luck, but the hard work that he's doing every night, two, three, four hours. Yeah, every routine. Night. You must have routine if you want to get to where we are, if you like. And there's lots of people out there who are similar to us in the way they do things. It's still only a hobby. He has a, we all have full-time jobs, and it's still a yeah. hobby. You know. But you must have a routine with the birds, you want, and you must set yourself out with a routine that you stick to, and the way you feed them, uh, and the way you operate when it comes to the shows. You, you, we have a way of doing things, and it proves today that the way we prepare our show birds particularly, it stands well on the day. Can you tell us a bit, a bit more about that? Because obviously people watching this will be really keen to learn from you. Well, um, well, what, what, what would be your kind of... Well, preparation before any show season, obviously you're looking for the birds in the flights to see which ones are good enough. And six, seven weeks before your first show, if you haven't caught any birds, you need to be looking at birds in the app they got their feathers. So if you look for any birds with broken tails, or broken what's it, tails, that are right, whatever way you pull them out, and uh, and the flight's the same. And then of course, spots not so much, I'm not all for pulling spots, because you can't tell with the spot. <laughs> you see, the thing is with spots, they don't half break like a tail or a flight. So you can't, if, it, if a spot is brand new, and you pull it, likely as it won't grow again. So I'm not one for pulling the spots. I, We've done well with a few birds today who have spots missing, so it's not the end of the world to pull spots. And, and I was saying to Joe, because birds were losing spots just before the show, it's not the end of the world because we've had your best young bird in show at championship shows with birds with an obvious spot missing because they were good enough. So it's not the end of the world with spot. So what we do then, that's the six weeks before the show. We'll catch the birds up on roughly five weeks before the first show and we're spraying them to begin with every day to get them look off. First week, ten days is every day. And just then, just plain water? No, plume spray in water, warm water. And I do that every day at like six o'clock before go to work. And then over the weekend. You now, could I say this is where the dedication comes in. It used to be my job to get up and spray the birds when Joe was younger couldn't ask him to do it. But he gets up now, six o'clock in the morning, he will spray a show team of 60 birds before he goes to work. And he'll do that 
to begin with every day. And, or, and as we get close to the show, three, four weeks away maybe, we might change it. If, depending on how the birds are coming into condition, we will change it to every other day. It's very when important the weather depends for a lot because it's the summer, the hot yeah. summer we have, it was every day. And it was cold water. You've got to wet the weather like at the moment, it's warm water. It was yeah. cold weather. You don't want to shock the birds, depending on the, the type of weather you're having. So hot and cold is just common sense. Lukewarm is fine all the time. It's just the best way. So yeah, so that's the uh, the routine for uh, spraying the birds. And uh, and yeah, okay, you get them ready, spot them out before the show. Or on a when we've got a big show coming up, like a championship show, we'll spot them out the week before the show. Start to spot them out. So I call it phase one. And then five or six days before the show, I'll call it phase two. And then two or three nights before the show, we'll finish them off. And we won't handle the birds again after that. They'll be finished. All we do then is dip their tails before they come out to the show. And the cocks are divided into twos. It's any more than two. You're going to be fighting. And it's a territory thing. Hens can be in one cage altogether. You've got it's 12 pins, all in the same cage, like one or three cages. And as, it, as it comes to cocks, they're quite dominant, so you become pals and you've got to be watching for them to find them and get on well. And in terms of feeding leading up to the show, what? what? Same regimes, we yeah. derive all year, feed them soft food every other night. So we are we a big sports. believer in the red millet spray. In the, Birds, but even birds that maybe feel a wee bit off, you can always get them to eat the red millet spray. They go wild, well, they don't know. Yeah. What well, do people say they eat like this? They don't know. I know they're very expensive, and I do sympathise with people coming into the hobby. Uh, we used to only use the yellow millet spray because the red sprays were so expensive. But what the pays the if you can afford the trees. red spray, yeah. same birds they do they do say as you say they eat it because. Obviously, go like wildfire for them, people in our area. It's worth it in, in, in the long run. And can you tell us a, a bit about the, the, the best in show bird? Uh, how, how, how many shows has it been at, sort of the last? Well, last year, as a, bit, as a young bird, as you probably know, he was best young bird here last year. He won best young bird in show at five other shows leading up to the BS Club show. So we we kind of knew he was he was a special budgie. Yeah. He got beat at one show, the best young bird, and that was by the hen. That's one best of the sex. That's a good story to go down. Yeah. This year as an adult, the first show we put him out at was the Langston Cheshire Area Society show. He was best in the show there. He went to the Cluid Championship the following weekend and he was also best in show there. And of course, these sort of birds, when they have two shows, they do start to get a bit fed up with it all. So we did put him out at another show where we thought he was in really good nick, but he didn't blow and stand like he can do. So we decided to uh, retire him from showing for the rest of the season and we prepared him for this show particularly. And in terms of going forward now, we'll, do you think we'll see this bird again or is he that valuable that he'll be in the breeding pen? Oh no, no, we wouldn't. He's had 16 babies this year, so he'll, he'll go again this year come November. Mm -hmm. Mum's resting the fight now. No, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't retire because people need to see these birds. It's part of the hobby. I don't believe in when a bird wins. We're not. It's not like horses, is it? We retire them off to stud or something. Okay, when he's old, and and we think he's now. A lot of birds for me. People bring them out, and I, I see them as stock birds rather than show birds because they've gone past where they, where they show at their best. Mm -hmm. So they are better staying at home. But when you have a bird like our Grey today, who is a, a really good show bird, he needs to be seen at the shows doing his best. They're the birds that people want to see. Fantastic. And probably just the last question, sort of slightly off at a tangent from from the club show. When you when you pair your birds. Um, do you line breed or are you more looking just to put for features? No, we line breed. We never inbreed. 
and I know you can achieve um, better things with the birds quicker by inbreeding, but you ruin your fertility, so I see no point in that. We have line bred the birds since I was, well, since I was a beginner. Outcrosses are key as well. Yeah. You've got to bring out crosses all the time. And, and what, how, I mean, if you, I mean, how many breeding cages do you have? No. 95. Okay, so um, if you've got 95 pairs, yeah. would you, how many, what, how many outcrosses would you bring in, say? In yeah, well, we like to mix it up. Like, we've gone through five years where we didn't buy a bird, and then we got studying from yeah, a guy called Hawk, called Lift in 2008. Yeah, that helped us on a bit, so we didn't have to buy it in five years. We had an extra 250 birds to use. So then we, when we got to, we got to Joe Mann's. Chris 16th, that was the last time we went. So we went in 2015 for my dad's 50th. 60th. 60th, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this, this year we've been to the mills. So. Yeah, I, last I, year we had, we got it, um, I stopped some eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Last year we got some birds um, from Alan Margin, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Like, which late on in the year, and they're, yeah. they're still yeah. big. Most of them are just young birds flying around at the moment. Um, we've had a couple of chips, two other for Pipers, yeah. uh, over the years. He's got very good birds. Uh, yeah, we choose who, who is the top breeder, and we go, never believe in buying just one bird. I will always come along with as many as I can afford. Because uh, nothing worse than travelling a long way, buying one beer, and then you lose success. it or it doesn't fill it. It's, that's been a waste of a trip. So we will always buy somewhere between five and ten birds at a time. And we will not necessarily go back to uh, the same breeder year in year out. We'll choose somebody else because all the all the top breeders have good birds. So there's no and they'll mix with yours. If you look today, how many really good breeders there are here with their birds, any one of those people can supply you with the sort of bird you're looking for. Because they're breeding the, a similar type of bird. The, the best birds are very similar to look at, regardless of colour. And in terms of, for, for a beginner say, um, who'll be watching this thinking, well I need to sort of take my stud forward, um, would you say to them to go and buy from one particular breeder like a, a family match pairs or go and get that kind of one stonking outcross to put into their, their own birds? What, what approach would you take? If, if you were that breeder, we'd say 10 breeding cages, what would be your advice? Well, Try and get as many as you can or can afford, as you said. Um, don't be, don't hold back basically. We want them to always improve, which we are. We always try to improve feed regime, buying birds in different lighting systems, and it, it's all, it's all like. It's always it's just, change. Can make I think what happens with a beginner generally, they'll latch on to a a champion breeder, and he may not be the best. He may not be winning the best in show regularly, but it's important to latch on to a champion breeder and learn from him. He will put you in the right direction. When he's and you will buy some birds from him, no doubt. But when you feel that you've reached the stage where the sort of birds he's selling you are not really what you're looking for, and you'll know that yourself in your own mind, that uh, then you need to go somewhere else and, and improve again. But really, does uh, any any good champion breeder can help these beginners from the start? It doesn't have to be the ones who's winning the best in show. That could be a mistake because sometimes those people are a bit more expensive than the others. <laughs> sure. Well, um, Frank Carroll and Joe McGavin, thank you very much for talking to us today. Congratulations again. Thank you. Um, and we hope you will enjoy um, in about 20 minutes time when you go and uh, pick up the, uh, the uh, all, well, a whole heap of trophies. So enjoy, enjoy your moment and thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.